it's Kate from Ink Stamp Share Dot Ink. My name is Kate Bolt. I'm an independent Stampin' Up demonstrator here in the UK, and I'm here for another Stamp Around the UK video hop. And our theme this month is Valentine or Love, and I am going to bring you a really fun swing card. Now, this is the first time I've made one of these, and I absolutely love it. I wanted to bring in a non-traditional kind of love-themed uh, stamp set and dies. And I picked out these. These are absolutely brilliant. They're in the new catalogue. It's part of the snail uh, mail suite collection. And it's got all these fun snail images. And it's got all the dies as well. Some of these I've taken out already. Uh, lots of things in here. So you've got a little envelope. You've got a nice postage stamp frame. It's all about getting happy mail. A little letter die and hearts. And then you can cut out the snails, the fun snail images, both from the stamp set and from the designer series paper that goes with it. So I'll show you some of the papers that go with it. So they've got some real fun colours. We've got, this is like a snail trail. We've got uh, Bermuda Bay. We've got, uh, that's Blushing Bride and Real Red. And you can see how much I've used of this one. Um, loads and loads and loads of it. So there's a lot of images. These are my scrappy bits on the top because I'm using those. And then you have got all these fun images with post mail and parcels, but then you've got all this that's really useful. So if you're not into the mushroom images or the snails, there's lots of paper in here that you can use for other projects and the colors are gorgeous. And I chose this because I like this. It's real red with uh, hearts in Blushing Bride and I thought that'd be perfect for a Valentine's Day card. Um, you can definitely use this for other projects without the snails and I like this one. There's lots in here. So we're going to crack on and I'm going to show you how to make this fun swing card. But as I do it, I'll show you, you can, look at this fun snails, you can cut these guys out with the dies. So let me just see, this one cuts out with this one. Do you see that? And let me have, have a look, I think, on the other piece I just covered up. Yeah, this one. I've been using a lot of this one. This is the one I'm going to use in my project. Which one is it? It's this one, that one. That one cuts out and it's got a little letter with a heart on, which I thought was perfect for a Valentine card. And then this die cuts out this image in the stamp set with all the mushrooms like that. So that cuts it that, but obviously you can just use the stamp set and you can cut these out once you've stamped and coloured them. So you don't have to use the design series paper, but it just makes you get more use out of your dies that way. Right, let's put that to the side and crack on and I'll show you what we're going to make. I'm really excited for this. Let me move it, it's so fun. Honestly, it's brilliant. Okay, let's move it all out of the way. It seems to take up a lot of space. Okay, I'm going to try and keep this video quite short. Now, there's a lot of little elements involved. So I will post the um, my measurements down below in the description bar. So don't worry about writing them down or if I'm a little bit fast. So I don't want to keep you here too long. So I'm going to do a square card and it's going to be a four by four card. Love a square card. So it's four by four. So I've got a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock and I cut it at eight by four and scored it at four inches to make my card base, okay? And then I need to have a little border. So my piece of Whisper White that I've got going on the top is just one eighth of an inch smaller. So that is three and seven eight inches square. And then I've got a piece to go on the back because my inside's gonna have a lot going on. So I've got a piece to go on the back for writing on, which is the same size, three and seven eighths of an inch square. So two basic white panels like that. And then for my inside, I've picked out that beautiful red and pink heart pattern and that's three and seven eighths of an inch square as well. Okay, and I've got some other little parts here. Now I'll put my measurements I, I had uh, down. So I might not have them to hand. I tidied up so I could see. Here they are, here they are. I wrote them all down so I couldn't forget. So I've got a little mechanism because I'm going to make this snail swing inside the card. So I need some more pieces. So this piece is, this is just a strip. It doesn't really matter how long it is because I'm going to chop it off halfway up. 
and it's just half an inch strip. But this one does, and this one is half an inch by two inches. And I've done it to match the colour so it doesn't stand out too much. Mine's in real red. So I've got those two pieces. And then I've got another piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock, which is the same as this. And this measures, mm, this measures the size of my card, which is four inches by three inches. And I'm going to make this into a stand to help my card stand up. Okay, so those are all the pieces that you need to make this fun card. Right, okay, so let's do the first thing first. Move some of these things out of the way. I'm going to cut a hole in my card stock to make an aperture. Now, I've got some of our layering circle dies here, and I've picked one that I think might fit to the front of my card, but will leave a nice border at the top and the bottom so it's not too big. And I'm going to cut that out on my cut and emboss machine right now. I'm just going to put a bit of tape on there to uh, keep it still. Now I only want it to cut through the front, not the back. Okay. And I'm going to stick my washi tape on just to keep it from moving around, not too hard. Pop that through the machine. Perfect, okay. There we are. Ooh, let's pull it off. Got that stuck on there, but it doesn't matter. But keep these pieces for another project. They're always useful. So that's that size one. Um, I am then going to take my Whisper White and I'm going to put it behind. I'm going to pop it inside because I need it to match. I'm going to put it so it's nice and central. I'm going to fold it over and I've got my pencil and I am going to draw a line, a line, a circle. <laughs> I'm going to draw around the circle so that I've got it exactly in the right place when I recut it. So make sure you take the right die, pop it back on, line it up. Oops, sorry, my head's in the shot. There we are, like so, pop on the washi tape and cut it again. So that'll be your aperture. hole if you like. So there we are. Keep that bit for another day. Put that over there. And then if you put this on the front, it should match exactly because you used your pencil to work it out. And if not, you can just turn it around and see which way up you had it. So I don't know, mine's fairly central both ways. But that was just a spot of luck. So just work out which way it's meant to go on. I'm going to put some glue on mine and stick it down straight away. That's the first part we need. Come on out. <laughs> Do you ever talk to your glue? Or is that just me? <laughs> oh dear. Right there. Check in again. You've got it the right way. Pop it on. bad. Oops, not much of a border at the bottom. There we are. That's better. Now I wanted a little frame on mine. So what I did was um, I picked back up that big die. Where is it? That's right. I picked up that big die and the next size down and I popped it onto a piece of uh, Blushing Bride cardstock this piece and I've cut it out already so I popped it on there I've cut out the circle and then once I cut my circle out I lined my smaller circle up and cut that out I ended up with a little pink frame which I've got right here and I so it will be exactly the right size and I'm going to pop it on oh that's too small how have I done that oh that was clever wasn't it I think it needs to be bigger I'll put one of my dies away that might have been what I did. Maybe I cut this one too big this time. My practice one. Yes, I need the slightly bigger. No, I think that's the biggest one. So I won't put a frame on this one. We'll leave it blank. We don't need a frame on it. Okay, 
but you could have done that. You could have made it the right size instead of my mistake. Um, this is my sample when I was making it, so you get the idea. You can put this nice pink frame on it. Right, okay, so I'm going to put the... I might see in a minute if I've got a larger circle die, but I think that might have been my largest one. You can obviously see you need to do the smaller one here and then the larger one that make the frame. Okay, right, let's pop this inside. See, I'll make the mistake so you don't have to. <laughs> doesn't really matter. I just thought it would be a nice contrast for the colour, but it doesn't really matter. That's the inside of my uh, paper. That's lovely as well. I pop that in like that. That's the inside. That's fun, isn't it? Now we're going to start working on our mechanism to make this. I'm going to have a little snail and I'm going to make him swing about inside the card. So our mechanism, right. So this little piece of real red that I've got out, I need to do a little bit of scoring. Let's grab my trimmer in, my scorer, and I need to work it exactly where I need to score it. So I need the long side at the top and I need to score it at a quarter of an inch right there using my scorer score it at a quarter of an inch and then i'm going to score it at one inch make sure it's right and then one and three quarter inches right there so i just got a little bit on the end like that and I'll show you that a little bit better like that and so you've got these three score lines and you're going to fold it in half in the middle to make a hill and then you're going to fold these two out like that do you see how you've got it okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two sides together leaving the bottom edge free so a little bit of glue whatever kind of glue you like I like the Tombow it sticks very well we're going to glue that together and then just hold it for a moment until it's stuck. Okay. And then I've got a hole punch. Any kind of handheld, very small hole punch, it has to be quite small, will work. Uh, you can get them pretty much anywhere. And I'm going to punch a little hole in the bottom. Um, make sure it's fairly central and not too near the edge because you don't want it to split the edge. But something a bit like that if you can see that like that and you've still got this bit free you see now we're going to bring the card in again and i am going to glue it down so where this seam is is where this seam is as well and this is where our mechanism is going to go and you're going to stick it in the middle and you need to stick it in the middle of the circle because your little snail is going to dangle and swing in the middle so it needs to be there so i'm going to put a little bit of glue on either side can't wait to see what everyone else has come up with for this uh, video hop this time. So fun. We have a whole group of really talented demos and we collaborate together and make this to bring you some crafty inspiration every month. So all of those links for the hop will be in the description bar below. So do hop around, get lots of inspiration and please show some love by uh, liking our videos. Okay. So there we go, I have done it and it looks like that. Can you see? So I've stuck it right over the seam of the card. Now I do want it to lie flat, so I'm just gonna give it a push on this side. That's it. And then I've got my strip of paper. Now I've made it the same size, the same color as this, the same type, so that it kind of blends in a little bit. Now you can see my mechanism, that's why I've made it red to kind of try and blend it in. If you really wanted to hide it all, you could make your card a different size, make your circle or square or whatever your aperture is uh, smaller so this gets hidden. I wasn't too worried about that. So I'm gonna take my hole punch again and punch a little hole in the end, in the middle, kind of like that. And then I've got a split pin, a brad. Now, I don't know about you, I've got a ton of these in my stash. Um, tons of them. I'm a scrapbooker and uh, yeah, I've had these in my stash for years. So they're very useful little things. And I found one to kind of match the colour. 
I'm going to put the mechanism together now and I'll show you how it works. So I'll put the pin through the middle. If the back is very long, you can chop it off with your scissors, the back of the uh, brad. I'm going to put it in. Now, the key to this is that when you split the pin at the back, you don't make it too snug because you want it to, to hang and dangle freely with no restriction. So just kind of bend it over gently and see what you've got. You need it to do that. See, it just freely moves about. So that's the idea. Okay. Now, I still need this to sit that way, but I don't want to push that shut. So yeah. So here we go. So the idea is that this will swing about. <laughs> and it's got its little thing on the bottom, it will swing about. And you can always loosen it a bit at the back. Right, okay, so now is the fun part. Now, I have already cut these out from the designer series paper and here's our little snail. And I've cut out another snail as well. But I think I'm gonna make this fun one with a love heart letter, because it's a Valentine card, I'm gonna make him dangle in the middle. So I'm gonna grab a sticky foam pad from my stash. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna grab a sticky foam pad from my stash. There we go. Oh, I'll use a big one, I think. I've got these spots. Uh, dimensional pad and I'm going to pop it on the back of my snail and I'm going to have it dangling where I think it might look nice. Make sure you stick it on this piece and not the back of your card. Yeah and so now I can cut it off. So I can cut off the piece at the bottom so it doesn't show when it swings like that. And so this little guy is going to swing about. <laughs> yeah it's really hard because it's a flat card. It's not a flat card, but when it's um, flat, obviously it doesn't swing, but you can only see it swinging when it does that. It's so cool. <laughs> love it, love it, I love it. So I think what I'll do now is I'll put the base in. The base is this piece that we have ready. And um, I need to do a little bit of scoring on that. I need to score it at half an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a half inches, I believe. So score it at, which we'll do it that way, half an inch, one and a half inches, and two and a half inches. It's going to give us just a nice little stand to keep it upright. And just to give it some rigidity. It's a good word, isn't it? Word of the day. Right, okay, I'm gonna just burnish those a little bit. And that. And that. And actually, I can't remember how it goes. Yes. So I'm gonna glue it in here like that. Actually, that's a little bit deep for the bottom of my, where I put my circle, but uh, I could cut it off a little bit. I didn't think about that when I designed it. I'm going to trim the edge of my piece off. So maybe you don't want it that big. It depends on what circle you use. Just cut a little bit of that off, just so I've got enough to stick on. But that should work. And still keep it upright. So I'm going to stick the back down first, I think. And I think I'm going to use Tombow, or you could use tear and tape, whatever glue is your preference. I kind of go between them all. As long as it's a really good glue. Uh, I don't think a tape runner would work particularly well for this job. You need it to stick really well. So make sure you've got it central, which I don't. You can kind of see at the bottom and wriggle it around. It's a good thing about Tombow, is that you can move it that so I've got that one and then I'm gonna do it on this little bit but maybe you might want I might want a smaller circle I think that was my problem because the one I made first had a smaller circle right and then just glue that one down hold it for a minute so that it takes 
And when you stand it up, you you have a you have a room for your snail to dangle. Does that make sense? It looks really cool, doesn't it? And it just gives that strength to the card. Yes, love that. So that's that. Now the fun part of decorating it. Now we've got our mechanism going on. <laughs> love it, love it so much. So I've cut out one of the other snails. Now this little snail, when you cut him out, he has a little bunch of. Um, when you cut him out the cards, uh, DSP, he has a little bunch of parcels, uh, gifts on his back. So I chopped those off because I'm making a Valentine card. It's more of a, a sentiment about sending a Valentine card rather than giving gifts. So I chopped it off <laughs> just because that was the way I like it. Right now, the next thing is a little bit of stamping. So with our stamping is I've taken one of these, this one from the stamp set and um, I have stamped it up in Memento ink. Oops. Okay, I've stamped it up in Memento ink and I am just going to stamp it onto the Whisper White. And there we go. Just had a bit of noise going on there, I do apologise. Okay, so I've got this beautiful, lovely mushrooms going on and I'm gonna stamp it twice. There we go. And now I wanna color, color them in. Now these are some of the colors that's in the papers and I'm gonna use my blends alcohol blend pens to colour them in so very quickly and simply I've already actually got some ready to go but I'll just show you how I colour them in so I'll just take the red one and I just go around and you don't have to do any special blending I'm just literally colouring in any colour I fancy or any colour that matches the papers that you've got or the card base you're using so yeah just go all the way around colour your images in like that and then you want to cut them out so i've cut mine out and i've cut out two in, and i've colored them different colors so here's one i made earlier in, in uh, pure good old-fashioned blue peter style so there we go i did done two i've got another one there that i did earlier as well don't need this many now one of the other papers as well has mushrooms on it i cut these out by hand very simple shapes to cut out, but I thought these would be great to decorate the front of our card with. Here they are. So I've got a load of mushrooms like that. And there's something missing here. Here it is. So <laughs> this is also in the stamp set, but you can cut it out of the papers using the dies and it's a little hello, hello. Hello, so there's loads of those hellos, all in different languages in the papers. Um, and you can just choose the one you like, or you can stamp it using the stamps and cut it out. I'm just trying to find the paper to show you. Here we go, you can have hello, bonjour, and you can have them in all different colours. You just have a little heart if you wanted. Love that. So I'm gonna decorate this card with this stuff now. So I am going to could have done this before I um, stuck the base on. I just thought this would be a better way of doing it. I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to put some of these in here like that. But before I do that, I think I will put the ones on the front because then I can see what needs to go on the back. So just where this is going to be. So on the bottom of this little snail, I'm going to pop that. Have, him pop, have her looking at him, or him looking at her, or him looking at him, or her looking at her, whatever you like. It's all there. And here we go. I'm going to put some of the little mushrooms on the front here, make a little scene, and decide what I want. So something like this. So I'm going to put this one on first. This is so fun. I would love to see if you have a go at making one or, one or two of these fun cards. 
and it doesn't have to be for somebody you want to send a valentine to it could be just a friendship card that you're thinking of them or you're missing them anything like that decide how i want it to look I love these mushrooms, they're so fun. And I think I'll have him on the front there, like that. Lots of fun. see that yellow one can we just move it around to where you want it to go that's better now I can see them just place them how you like them got that one in now I rather like this hello and I was going to stick it to my swinging snail and I just need to and to make sure that wherever I stick it it's not going to get caught in the mechanism or the side of the card. So let's have a go with that. Let's pop the hello right in there. Let's take some of that glue off. I like that the little speech bubble actually has, has the speech bubble bit, which helps it stay on. Hello. That's so fun, isn't it? That is so fun. Right, so I'm going to pop some of these behind now. I've got to decide what I want, where I want it to go. One here. And one here, I think. We'll just glue those in. I've just got to decide which way around. I might put that one the other way. Yeah, I think that one that way. And that one that way, just because of the colours. Actually, it could just go in here. But would that interfere? Yeah, that would interfere with the mechanism. So stick it to the back. That's exactly what you need to do. You don't want it to catch on it. Now, I've seen a few of these cards on YouTube. So if you have a look around, you can find all kinds of them. And I just thought, oh yeah, I need to use the snails I do to make this card. There we go. So I think, I think that's it. Almost. Almost done. So... I need to bring in these little resin dots, these little resin hearts that come with the snail male sweet bundle as well. I'll put some of these on. So let's take some of these. These are really cute little resin hearts. And I've been using them on so many different projects. Put one there. So halfway through the video, I asked my son to be quiet. That's why I'm, I was a momentary lapse. Um, he wasn't aware and he was outside the door. I'm sure us all there during this lockdown period were all contending with all of these fun things, you know. Bless him, he's as good as gold. Okay, so I might just put another one somewhere inside. But I don't want to interfere with the swinging part of it. Where else should I put one? Down here, I think. And then I've got a visitor now, I've got the dog coming in. <laughs> there we go. So there, there's our finished article. I hope you love it. Can you see how it swings? Swingy little. <laughs> so fun. I hope you like it. Do have a go. Um, have a look around. Go around the blog hop, uh, the video hop. See if there's any uh, 
lovely inspiration there for you. And you can visit my blog at inkstampshare.ink. All the products I've used are available there and uh, you support me no end. And also, um, if you did like the video, please give me a like and uh, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next month for our next Stamp Around the UK video hop. Thank you so much for joining me. Goodbye.